The story I'm going to tell you today is called The Enchanted Patches. It's from this book, The Little Tin Soldier and Other Stories, which was given to me by my grandmother when I was a child. Um, Nan used to travel back and forth to England because that's where her family was from, and every year she would bring me back some fun stories. Um, this one was published in 1985, so that will give you a good idea of how old I am. And um, you can see it's falling apart because I read it so many times. Um, the actual story itself, I can't find an author for. Um, I looked everywhere, but I cannot find anyone who has written a story called The Enchanted Patches or even The Magic Patches. Um, a lot of the stories in this book are by Hans Christian Andersen, but that one, this one, oh, The Enchanted Patches isn't. Um, and I'm not sure who wrote it. It was um, compiled by a woman named Barbara Hayes. Um, so she obviously found it somewhere and added it to the storybook, but I'm sorry, I can't find a source for who wrote it, but um, it's a really good story, and I think I, the reason I latched on to it was because I really liked that the girl's dreams came true in the story, and um, also because her name is Esmeralda, and my grandmother's best friend, who I was really close to, her name was Evne, and she always told me it's from Esmeralda in it's French, and um, even though she was extremely British, I think she thought that it was a very smart name, and I always really liked that name. And so, and as a child, I, I secretly thought that the story was about Esme. Um, and of course, I realized as I got older that it was all make -believe. Um, But those were the reasons I liked the story so much. So it's called The Enchanted Patches, or in my mind, The Magic Patches, and it happened a very long time ago once upon a time, back when there was such a thing as witches and fairies and magic, and magicians, and enchantment. And there was a little girl, and her name was Esmeralda, and her parents were no longer alive, and she grew up into a beautiful young woman, and she lived alone in a cottage all by herself. And this cottage was in a rural area, and there were some other little cottages around, but she mostly kept to herself. She didn't have time to dream big dreams because she was busy looking after the cows and weeding the vegetable patch and taking care of the cottage and making a livelihood for herself. But back in those days, there weren't gas stations or restaurants along the road. Uh, travelers would just walk along these little footpaths and um, people would leave out basic food like water and, and cheese and bread for them to eat and often um, travelers would ask them for a place to stay, such as a woodshed or a barn, um, because there were no inns along the route. Um, so this is exactly what happened to Esmeralda. One night, a elderly gentleman with a big long beard and dressed in rags showed up at her door and said, Ma'am, could I please have a place to sleep in your cowshed, and would you mind giving me just some water and bread and cheese? And she said, of course, of course, come in. And she wasn't that tired because she had a friend over to help her milk the cows that day and she had gotten all her chores done and she said, come please sit by the fire and I will mend your coat. He was wearing this coat full of all these colorful patches that didn't match the rest of the coat. And it was tattered and torn. And she had some extra fabric that was about the same color as the coat. And she said, I will mend your coat so it looks new again. And he said, oh my goodness, aren't you kind? And he chitter-chattered away while she worked on fixing the patches on his coat and warmed himself by the fire. Then he went off to the cowshed to go to sleep and she returned his coat to him and she went to bed and when she went up and woke up in the morning he was gone. And she went about her day busying herself and tidying up the cottage and she came across the old patches that she had taken off his coat and she held up one of the colorful patches in her hand and said, oh, how I wish that I had some beautiful clothing of my own. Something beautiful to wear. And poof! A magic chest appeared before her eyes, filled with beautiful gowns, and they were all in exactly her size. And Esmeralda was a very smart cookie, and she knew that something magical was going on here because no wish of hers had ever been granted before. And she thought, maybe, just maybe, that man with the patches was a magician. And she didn't think it was right to keep those patches to herself without, well, one, telling him that 
his patches were magic because maybe he didn't know, and two, sharing them with him because they rightfully were his. So she picked up another patch because the first one had disappeared when she made her wish. She picked up the next patch and she held it in her hand and she said, I wish that the man with the coat would return. And poof, he shows up in, inside the cottage and this time he doesn't look ragged at all. He's dressed in finery. And she said, are you a magician? And he said, well, yes, I am. And what am I doing in your cottage? And she said, well, I wished for you to come here with your magic patches. I wanted to give them back to you. And he said, oh, not only are you kind, but you're an honest girl as well. He said, I, I wouldn't expect that. Most people would have kept all the patches for themselves and would have never thought to summon me. And so because of that, because you're such a kind and honest girl, I am going to make sure that all of your wishes not only come true, but that they bring me great happiness. Because oftentimes in life we wish for things, and sometimes they do come true, and they don't always necessarily make us happy when we get what we thought we wanted. So he got to, or she got to have the wishes come true, and she got to have happiness, which is the most important part. So he said, come on, come on, what else are you going to wish for? And so she thought and looked around her cottage and she said, well, I've always wanted to live in a beautiful palace. And so she picked up one of the wishes and said, one of the patches and said, oh, I want to live in a beautiful palace. Please turn my humble cottage into a palace. And poof, her humble cottage turned into a beautiful palace with many rooms. And the wizard said, wow, what a sensible girl and wise girl you are to wish for a house because that will last forever and it will always be of value and it's a good investment but it's very wise of you and so she picked up her next patch and said this time i want to wish for servants to keep my house beautiful and i want their wages to be paid for the rest of their lives so i never have to worry that they're hungry or that they don't have any money and they can take care of the grounds and the house will always be looked after. And the magician said, you are a very sensible girl, very wise, honest, and kind. Have you ever thought of taking a husband? And of course, Esmeralda blushed. I'm not sure if she maybe thought that the, the magician was asking her hand, but she blushed and kind of looked at him and said, mm, well, yes, I have thought about taking a husband. And he said, wow, I have a human son. He's not a wizard, he's not a magician, but he's very handsome. And he's a little bit wild. He's out hunting in the woods not far from here right now. And I think you're just the thing he needs to settle down and be a very good man. And she thought about it and she said, well, I think I kind of would like to have a husband. And you say he's handsome and, and smart and and a nice person, well, okay, as long as we'll be happy. And, she, and the wizard said, well, of course you'll be happy. I, I guarantee that all of your wishes will make you happy. She held up the last patch and she said, okay, I wish that I would meet and marry the magician's son and that we would live happily ever after. And they did. The end.